St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from the Sisters of Providence of St. Vincent de Paul on the 151st anniversary of their foundation in Kingston, Ontario. They give thanks to God for all the blessings they have bestowed on them and their ministries and implore the continued guidance of providence on their congregation. On behalf of everyone joining us in this celebration, our most sincere thanks to the Sisters of Providence of St. Vincent de Paul for their generous gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today we commemorate Saint Lucy, an early Christian martyr. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the glorious intercession of the Virgin and Martyr Saint Lucy give us new hearts, we pray, O Lord, so that we may celebrate her heavenly birthday in this present age, and so behold things eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, do not fear, I will help you. Do not fear, you worm Jacob you insect Israel. I will help you, says the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Now I will make of you a threshing sledge, sharp, new, and having teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and crush them, and you shall make the hills like chaff. You shall winnow them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the tempest shall scatter them. Then you shall rejoice in the Lord. In the Holy One of Israel you shall glory. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue is parched with thirst, I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers on the bare heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will put in the wilderness the cedar, the acacia, the myrtle and the olive. I will set in the desert the cypress, the plain and the pine together so that all may see and know, all may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this. The Holy One of Israel has created it. The Word of the Lord.
and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. The the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now when Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on to teach and proclaim his message in the surrounding cities and towns. Speaking to the crowds about John the Baptist, Jesus said, truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John came. And if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Today's Gospel, like those of last Sunday and next Sunday, focuses on the person and role of John the Baptist. He stands at the beginning of all the accounts we have of the public life of Jesus. Coming out of the desert like an ancient prophet, John proclaims the near approach of the kingdom of God and calls people to conversion. He invites those who accept his message to be baptized by him in the River Jordan as a sign of their desire to live in a way that reflects the values and demands of the coming kingdom. In the verses immediately preceding our reading, Jesus asked the crowds what they thought they were doing when they went out to see John and to hear him preach. Was it their intention to see a prophet, he asks. Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. Jesus then applies to John a verse from the prophet Malachi. Behold, I send my messenger before you, who will prepare your way before you. That text leads in the last verse of today's reading to the identification of Jesus by Jesus of John as Elijah who is to come. It was said of the prophet Elijah that he had been taken up to heaven from where one day he would return to usher in the final coming of God's kingdom. Here, Jesus declares Elijah to be the forerunner of the Messiah, a role he adds that has now been fulfilled by John the Baptist. For the evangelist, John sums up and brings to bear on Jesus the great prophetic tradition of Israel. Although the message of the prophets was directed in the first place to people and events of their own time, they also pointed beyond them 
to further interventions of God in the future. They spoke of the end times as a day of the Lord on which the whole of human history would be brought to fulfillment. The Gospel writers see the hopes of the prophets being realized in a new and unexpected way in the life, teaching, and destiny of Jesus. In him, the kingdom of God is present in the world, if not in its fullness, then at least in a way in which it has never been before. It is to this newness that Jesus points when he says that although no one born of women was greater than John, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The first reading for most of our Masses this week is from the second part of the book of Isaiah, sometimes called the book of Consolation. It's addressed to the Israelites who were then living in exile and whom he assures that all appearances to the contrary, God has not abandoned them, but will one day bring about their liberation. Their lives and nature itself will be transformed. I will open rivers on the bare heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys, God declares. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. To a people living on the edge of a desert, such images represent a promise of breath taking fertility of abundant life. In comparison with such expectations, it is clear that the life and destiny of Jesus did not usher in the kingdom of God in its fullness. What he did bring about was a new and definitive moment in its coming. In doing so, he renewed our hope. As central as faith and love are to the gospel and to our sense of life, hope is also important. At certain times, it becomes absolutely crucial. Without hope, faith can be undermined and love wither and dry up. The readings from Isaiah this week have been meant to stir up and strengthen the hope of the exiles that they would one day return to their homeland. For many in Canada, now as in the past, the sense of exile is very much part of their experience. Others, even if they have not been compelled to leave their home by political, social, or economic pressures, still find themselves in a world that is different from the one in which they once lived. They cannot help but feel, at times, a longing for what they left behind. For all of us, a somewhat analogous experience is part of our spiritual life. The very word we use to describe our local communities of faith, parish, comes from a Greek word suggesting a sojourner. The word reminds us that in this world, we have no lasting dwelling place. When our time has run its course, we are to leave it for the world of God. If hope for a better life for ourselves and our family can empower us to do whatever is required in order to succeed, hope for fulfillment in God should be enough to enable us to live as people whose destiny is with him. St. Augustine spoke of humanity in terms of two cities, one he called the earthly city and the other the city of God. The horizon within which the members of the first city live is exclusively this world. In it and it alone do they find their meaning and their happiness. Although the members of the city of God live in the same world, it does not exhaust the reach of their hope. They know that they are made for God 
The path on which they are walking leads beyond death to life in him. It is in the light of such hope that the visions and the readings this week from Isaiah take on their fullest meaning. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will draw us ever more deeply into the hope at the heart of Advent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the intentions of our donors and of all those who have written or phoned in asking for our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those, whether old or young, who feel isolated and lonely at this time of the year, that those who can will reach out to them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for peace and justice throughout the Middle East, especially in Syria, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our deceased relatives and friends and for those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Yes. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Gracious God, we ask you to accept me for the sacrifice which we Wash my hands, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin, Blessed Lucy, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed that his first coming, the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased her throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed of it by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us give to one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only see the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of the blessed Lucy, bearing in our body the death of Christ, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would ask you to stay tuned for an announcement after Mass by Father Gorman. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to the Sisters of Providence of St. Vincent de Paul in Kingston, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation. at the halfway mark in our appeal for the funds we so urgently need for the production of Mission 2013. You'll recall that in last year's mission, Sister Barbara Leonard took us on a journey, a walk with Jesus through those ancient times, and we saw him in all sorts of situations dealing with women, and how his attitude and treatment of women was so foreign to the culture of his time, a culture of suppression, which in some places continues down to our own day. This year again, we focus on Jesus, this time to learn from him the secrets of living a life without fear. In the Gospels, Jesus urges us to be not afraid, and he repeats his admonition again and again and again. But how do we conquer our fears? That's one of the subjects of this year's mission. Anything you can send us will help. You'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation. Thank you. <laughs>